back to the old normal stuff. I'm going to talk about gear, not in the context of like, you know, specific gear, like a review or something like that, but I'm talking about what's the, what's the reality of a, using the same gear with the same settings, even in the same studio, with two people, and then two different people. Let's just say the artist stays the same, but the engineer is different, and, and, and the producer maybe. But the gear is the same. Same gear, same mic pre, same compressor, same microphone, same settings but it's just different with the people that you're working with or what it's different with the artist, who the artist is working with. Something changes. Uh, we talked about it a little bit on the live stream on Friday night, Friday night. Yeah. If, uh, if you were around, that's cool. Um, I'm going to go over some of that stuff. I'm going to go over what I think is important for people to work together and what the concept is as far as why things work sometimes, why they don't, why they're amazing sometimes, why they're not. Um, it's kind of like I have some notes here, of course, the yellow pad. I got to get some new ones. Um, it's like going to a restaurant and you go one time with someone and you have a burger and the fries and it's unbelievable and you go you're like man this was this was this was amazing you go back the next week with a different person you order the exact same thing it was made by the same chef with the same ingredients cooked exactly the same and it doesn't even taste remotely the same because the vibe has changed who you're with. That's my, that's my little take on it. So in the studio, I think it's, it, it's affected even more by person, personality and the, the people in the room. And that doesn't, it can be, it can be a little bit, uh, misunderstood. So how can I describe it? Sometimes the combination of a producer and an artist is super simpatico. They agree on everything. It's like the smoothest, easiest going thing. It creates a, an energy in the room. It, it makes its way into the record and it, and it has that and it has a certain sound. Um, that isn't always ideal. I've seen some artists have a great res get a great result from a from a combative relationship. Some artists seem to work better with producers that push them, aggravate them, get them out of their own head that way. Like just you know. There's a sort of like a, uh, a battle going on in the session. Um, so it doesn't have to be gentle and coddling. It can be competitive even between the producer and the artist. It can, the engineer can affect the energy that goes to into the recording. And what I'm saying is this is like all same gear, same settings, same microphone, same room. The pace of the engineer, the pulse of how he or she goes about running the session. You know, what's the the overall energy? And I think there's there's a lot to it in that I've seen it mostly with vocalists, and I'm not going to um, put any specific names out there, but I I know from firsthand experience that it's it can be it it affects the vocalist who they're 
who's in the room, even if it's someone who's just sitting watching, because that could be the perfect muse. It could be the perfect, perfect sounding board, um, or it can go the wrong way. So let's just say you're a phenomenal singer. You used to work in a certain way. You're your usual engineer is not going to be there, there, there that day because, I don't know, there's a wedding or something like that. You know, it has to be drastic. And so the engineer says, you know what, I'm going to uh, leave all the settings exactly the same. I'll set you up exactly perfectly. And um, we've been working in this room for several weeks all so-and-so has to do, and I'm just saying a so-and-so, it's like the person that's filling in for that engineer, all that person has to do is hit record, hit locate, pay attention, keep, keep uh, aware of where they're at in the song and what they want to work on, record the vocalist, should, be, should it be easy-peasy, as they say. And it turns out to not be. Um, and, and why is that? It's because the interaction of people in the room together creates all kinds of cause and effect. So if, for instance, if that vocalist is not confident in something about that person who's sitting in for the the usual that's all it could it, that's enough that could that could be just enough to tick the box into not so great of a take you know maybe it's a feeling of i'm used to seeing that face across the glass i'm used to hearing that person's voice in the talk back uh, i'm used to making mistakes in front of that person and I know I don't get any reaction. I'm, I don't, I don't feel, um, self-conscious about it because I've done it before a million times. Um, he knows when I go for a note that at times it's not going to be what I'm looking for, but I'm going to get there. Uh, he knows not to ask. I'm going to use he just for the sake of, because I'm a he. Um, he knows not to ask, do you want to hear that back? Or he knows not to ask, should I punch that in again before I tell him to? These are all things that can really affect the confidence of the singer. It can affect the mood. It can affect the concentration, the focus of the singer. And I could say singer, rapper. Um, it could be guitar player. It could be, you know, the guitar player is not used to the engineer and, and or the producer. And you're just, they're just never going to get a great take because the vibe is off. It's such a used word over and over again, the vibe and all that, but it's, it's real. So does it come from experience or is experience overrated or is it proof of concept? Is it proof that it's no coincidence that when these two people work together, a good result happens? A seminal result happens. These are things to wonder about. These are things I wonder about. I'm going to talk a bit about the, the live from Friday night. Um, because as you know, I shut them down to members only. You've got to hit the join button to do that. It's a dollar. Um, I asked the question of people that were on board. And we had a lot of people. Um, are you at the top of your game? It's a question that I put out there for everyone. Are you, do you feel like you're at the top of your game? And if, if not, why? 
And uh, if so, good. Uh, bravo. And But I also talked about the, rea the concept that, you know, you're going to be, it's sort of tidal. You're going to be, you know, going up and down a little bit. You're going to feel like you're at the top of your game for a certain amount of time, hopefully a lot of time. And then there'll be like some moments where you're just not feeling great about things. Um, how how your beats are going, how your mixes are going, how how your interaction with vocalists are going. That was one of them. I talked about G.E. Smith and a really long interview that he has uh, that is of him on YouTube that I recommended to everyone to watch. It's just got a lot of insight into the music game, into the the trials and tribulations of coming up in through the music industry and some things what to look out for, some things about, a lot about, and he doesn't really directly say how important it is, but he, if you read between the lines, relationships are everything. One person recommending you, the next person, you, re you recommending someone. Um, I think we talked about it a while ago. It's, um, it's not so much who you know, it's more of who knows you. So th that's kind of one of the things I like to put out there is that, you know, people need to know you if they're going to want to work with you um, or recommend you. Uh, peop oh, I talked a little bit on like a, uh, a thing about people coming back into your life. Um, and sometimes it's awesome. And sometimes you're like, damn, why did, why did that person, why, why did we uh, fall off? We were like a great combination, right? And then there's the other ones where they like, they come back into your life and you're thinking the same thing until like maybe the next morning, you know, after it's sunk in a little bit that you heard from this person and you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's why, um, that's why I wasn't missing them so to speak. There's, there's, those things come back. The coffee. Thanks again for the buy me a coffee things. I got a few of those the other day that were really appreciated. Um, we also talked about, do you know how to uh, look for sounds, build a library? Um, why am I telling you all this? Because uh, maybe I'm trying to say like, you know, check out the stream on Friday nights. They're fun. Uh, I'm going to continue doing them, you know, trying to do them at like seven o'clock every Friday Eastern. It went for about two and a half hours. I was like, I couldn't even talk anymore by the end. And uh, it's cool. We get a lot of interaction. There was something like 1,250 messages in the chat. Um, I, I couldn't keep up. I was all over the place. So I'll come back to the gear thing. Um, I've seen this happen with, you know, firsthand. I've seen, seen it, heard it. It's real. If you're that person that is having the sessions that don't have good vibes, even though you're using all the great gear and you're, you're wondering what's up, maybe it's just the combination of you and whoever the other person is. Um, it's, it's definitely a theme for me that the company you keep, um, I talked about it a long time ago about the, the A-list. Um, I've worked on a few projects, um, where going freestyle now, where everyone on the session was at the top of their game or getting close to that. And they were all sort of, um, you know, know, it's not an egotistical thing or whatever to say, but like everyone was basically kind of like at an A level. And you can only keep those kind of things together for so long because A listers or not listers, A level talent tends to want to go off on their own and do their own things. So if you you can pull off for a little while having a 
tremendous team of all sort of like leader kind of characters, um, you could wind up with a magical record or magical album project um, because there's like a buzz in the room all the time of people that are just focused, hitting on all cylinders, making things happen. Um, things are happening almost too easily because like every, everyone knows what's going on. Like, Hey, I need a, you know, I need to do a vocal. Boom. They're in the room. The, the microphone is set. There's no dialing around trying to get, uh, a good tone, same thing for the piano, same thing for any of the other instruments. Um, anything that's like spontaneous is easy. When you have those type of, that type of talent in the room, it's, it's, it's a joy. It's, it's easy. It's not, there's no, um, angst about doing anything. Mixes are easy. Tracking is easy. I know it sounds crazy, but um, it just can be. So if you are try working your way up and or working your way into things, and also like it doesn't always work out. Um, you know there are there are bad combos. There are, there are producers and engineers who don't sync up. I've had several that you know. Maybe I felt it where I was like, ah, I don't really like working with this, this guy, his flow, his workflow energy is kind of not for me. Um, I was never one. I never really could never really do the phoning it in thing. I could grind through a session if I had to, because, you know, I was booked on it. And once you're there, you're there, you're not leaving in the middle of it. But, you know, there's some people you just don't have a match with. Um, there are some people that are going to like you and some people aren't going to like you. I mean, that's just, that's the reality. And it also could be day to day. I talked about, I gave a Friday nights are actually where I'm going to do my, um, once in a while, uh, stories from the, the archives thing. So if you're into that kind of thing, that's more or less what that's going to be for. And not the regular channel content like this. And this one's, you know, the usual spitballing, talking about, like, studio vibes. This is typical of um, when I'm working and someone else is in the room and I want to take a break, sip some coffee, hold on. I'll mute the sound of that. Somebody complained about that once or twice. Um, when I heard the, when I heard the coffee chug, I was out. I mean, I've seen people like, there's some artists, there's some YouTube people that do all kinds of crazy stuff besides all the jump cuts, which you're not going to see any on this. That's typically not my thing. I tried it. I think last week there weren't jump cuts, but there were a lot more editing and I did some more, uh, flavor as far as incorporating some audio. There's going to be some new things that I'm going to do over the next month or two uh, with regards to doing a little bit of um, using some of my mixing gear and incorporating that into the video and showing you guys how to, you know, how certain things sound. But I want to make sure that the sound is up to snuff to go with the video. It's hard enough to do all of this stuff and like, you know, keep it together and do a thumbnail and a title and all that silly stuff. Uh, that'll be it for today. Live stream is at seven on Friday Eastern. Take care.